but the project will only be a success if the female behaves naturally, unhampered by the collar. If not, the data will be worthless. A few days later, Mark begins to recognize behaviors in her that he had seen prior to the collaring. About 2.30 in the afternoon, she went off to a cliff and waited there. There's no mark all around at all. And then suddenly you could start to see a few boulders rolling down. And there's one mark all was coming down the cliff. And she heard the boulders. And she moved around this cliff and took up this position slightly higher up. And the mark all sort of went down away from her and then down towards this gully. And as she came down the screw slope, she did this rolling thing, which she does. She'll roll right over on her back like a domestic cat. When she does this rolling, she, you know that she's into a serious hunt. And um, we don't quite know why it is. Maybe it's to kind of mask the scent or change the colour. So she went further down, and she got to this point, and she was looking down at the markhor. And the markhor just went over the lip of the gully. And as soon as he'd gone over the lip, she charged down the hill, really long run. And got to this bush and hid in this bush. I was following her down and I got to this point and I, because of this black and white viewfinder in the camera, I couldn't really see what was going on. And in fact, the markor was just right in the middle of the frame. I couldn't see her at all. And so I was like, Oh, where's she gone, where's she gone, move the camera, and at that moment she charging out of the bush and took him out, jumped right on top of him, and they disappeared down to the bottom of this gully. She had made a successful kill, and so even with this white collar on, you know, she, she was obviously still able to, to, to survive, so that was quite a relief to see she could do that. That was good. For the longest time, I was really upset. You know, I just couldn't see the justification of all of this. But now, having 